we're in very rarefied air. Women with normal jobs are in very different situations mm -hmm. than us. So I sort of feel very out of touch or arrogant even to talk about my fight for my pay because I was in a very specific situation where I had a very real number. I had seen that Grey's Anatomy had grossed $3.7 billion mm -hmm. over 15 years. And, and I could take that very real number and attribute my face and my voice. My hairdresser of 12 years, Thursday, in tears walked off set because she did not fail like she was being compensated fairly for us shooting three episodes at one time and she's only being paid to do one episode. Even though we struggle in our industries, we're struggling a lot less than, let's say, you know, people who are working normal jobs. I get so petrified in this space talking about equal pay, especially when you look at the intersectional aspect of it, right? where white women get paid more than black women, and black women get paid more than Asian women, and Asian women get paid more than Latino women. And it's like a very scary space to step into, because I always feel like I fail when I speak about it because I can't help but feel already so gracious to do what I do, and I feel like culturally, I was raised to just feel so appreciative of getting here. Recently being faced with being offered a project where my fellow actress was offered it prior and she tells me how much she was getting paid for it. And then I ask for the same amount and they say no, because you're not worth that much. As she was, because she's bigger than I am. But it's the same job, it's the same amount of hours, the same movie. And, same. Bigger, and bigger by what standard? Let's, exactly. be, let's keep it all the and way then, 100. But that's and what bigger I'm by saying. what standard and who determined that standard? You know? Because let's, let's be like, I'm gonna brag on you for a second. You're the you're the only show on a on a on a whole ass network where your show has been critic has had critical acclaim. You've been not only nominated, you've won. Yeah. So on worth by whose standards? You know what I mean? If you you want to go by social media, you're killing that. You want to go by mm -hmm. who can't walk down the street and without being recognized and loved by all different kinds of people, that that's you too. So worth based on what? Who decides who's a bigger star than other people? Who moves the needle more than others? I mean, yeah. they have Q ratings or whatever else they, they think they have, but some things aren't quantifiable. It's a challenging space to talk totally. about. And you feel like a jackass, right? So, yeah. but it's all relative. So you, like, you, you feel like a jackass, you feel like you should just be grateful and, and be quiet because it's more than others, right? And it's more than I've ever, more than you know, I've ever especially made. low income family. Families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, lady, stop it. But at the same time, when those lists come out, when Forbes drops the, the top paid actresses in television, yeah. the top paid actresses in film, and there's no women of color on it, it's like, well, why did you speak up? And you're like, because I felt like I was just supposed to be a that you, no. you gave me yeah. something because we're rarely right. on TV. And that so feeling rarely. carries over in negotiation. And that's why we're not in the top 25 top paid people in, in any, in front of, behind, like, because we are so conditioned to be grateful. 100%. For, to, to have, not even a seat at the table, we're not even anywhere near the table. We're like near the door, like crammed with the, you know, yeah, or a gang the window, of people. Just and, just peering like, in. <laughs> like. Yeah, and we're supposed to be happy for that, and so you're not supposed to, to, to buck back. And so in negotiation, you're like, okay, I, I know what my worth is. I know what I bring to the table. And then sometimes it's your teams that are like, we could go too far and you could lose it all together. But then it's like, do I want to be a part of a project where they don't really value me? Yeah. And they think I'm interchangeable with everyone, any, any and everyone. Yeah. And they don't really see my value, but somehow magically you saw the value in all these other people and, you can, and that value comes with a very clear number that is nowhere close to what we're asking for. I'm asking for a, a crumb compared to what you've actually paid and not gotten a return on. So what are we even really talking about? Mm -hmm. They will pass you over and pass you over and give 100%. the money to the next person who's the squeakier wheel. So where do you learn that, like, right? So I feel like culturally, for me, either it was cultural or domesticated in my household, even though I was given all these fundamentals of uh, self-worth and, and, and confidence and integrity and being good to others and being respectful on set and being a conscious contributor, but I think generationally, in the line of my family, we've always been paid less. We've always settled for less. We've always felt like we've had to fight to show our worth before, you know, versus the other way around. We're gonna tell you you're incredible and you get all this. So, like, how do we 
break that cycle. And I think about it not just for myself, but for like the generations after me and the young Latinas that I'm supposed to be speaking to. It's a, it's hard and it's terrifying. It's terrifying. And you just want to work. And you just want to work. You just want to work. But there comes a point where I'm not going to feel good on set if I feel like I'm undervalued mm -hmm. and my money doesn't match my level of contribution. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes time to sell this piece of art, I gotta do that. You're gonna have me prancing around the country yep. and the and the and the world like a show pony. Mm -hmm. But all those all these other people that don't have to do all the selling work of it are making way more. Are making way more. <laughs> and I'm not gonna get the credit. If it's a win, it's not gonna be because of me. And if it's a failure, it's, it's gonna, my face. It's that's gonna everywhere. be because of it's me. Be because of me. <laughs> yes. So you need to pay me either way this goes. Because <laughs> well, just like everybody else, I'm taking it. I'm the target. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, because yeah. also. You know, the executives and the studio people, all the studio heads, all the people who are deciding the budgets and making the decisions are all older white men. They're the ones who live in Bel Air and Beverly Hills in the big houses. They're the ones who are really getting rich off the content. The talent makes a piece, but we feel like it's a lot because it's more than we've ever paid before. You know, if we talk about Grey's Anatomy and who's profited from it. It's Disney, the corporation, the shareholders. I believe talent really has to step up and we deserve a piece of the profits, of the back end profits, because it, uh, it is our faces, it is our voices. We are the ones out there selling it. We are the charisma. It, we are the lore. We're talking about in success, mm -hmm. when everyone else gets paid, can I get paid too? A tiny little fraction. Yeah. Where, so there is no skin off your nose. And, it's and they're very like, rare. ah. Very rare that they give people <laughs> profit, profit Never. participation. They'll pay the caterer before they pay talent. I've taken less money knowing I'm taking less money than a male co-star because they're telling me this is as much as we're going to give you. Your male co-star is getting more. But if you don't take this deal, another girl will take it. Mm. And, and that's I've part taken of the it because I'm so passionate and because I'm like, well, I want to do this project. And you're basically telling me if I don't take this deal, there's five other girls who will take it in a heartbeat. And I don't know what's worse, like not knowing or knowing and still taking the job because that feels terrible. Mm. Right, and then We're not like, taking the job when yeah. someone else will take it. Yeah, you totally. know? So what's the, what's the right answer? Oh, I don't and know, and it feels like, terrible. We're like, I have, I've been like, well, I know I'm being creatively fulfilled. I mean, ish, until you have to see these people at work and then yeah. you're like, oh, like all of you. Right. Um, but that's why I'm so happy that, like I'm just watching you guys talk in awe because to see like the bravery of everyone talking about it. Cause the other thing too is I was like embarrassed to tell my friends. Cause I'm like, what if, what if my girlfriends are making as much money as their male co-stars? And I felt like when I was younger, no one was talking about how much money they're making. Like that wasn't something it's to a, talk about. Yeah, it's, it was it's like, it was tacky to talk yeah. about. You brought up another point. There's a big giant pig who owned an independent film company whose name we won't say here. He had houses all over the place and houses in the Hamptons and houses in the city and he was making all that money. And actors and actresses on his films were getting paid very, very little because they're gonna get awards. You're gonna get an award. Because God forbid we get it's both. Like people get both, like you, you get paid and you know an award. What? creatively fulfilling, give me my money. <laughs> You're in this for money. You're in this to make money. As long as they can divert our attention and lure us with the creative carrot. We don't care about a carpet. I don't care about a statue. I care about sending my kids to college. Mm. At some point, we have to do a little of that too. If they dangled one of my idols in front yeah. of me. You want to you know, do it. Yeah. And it's, it, it, you know, that's the, the sort of our weak spot. Well, and also, we're not talking about, we're not asking for more, we're asking for equal. When, and for people of color, when has an award ever paid off financially mm -hmm. later? Right, right, right. Like, like they'll be like, oh, oh my honey, God, yes. you won an Oscar or, or a Golden Globe or an Emmy or whatever it is. We are prepared to offer you, hold on to your horses, fourth lead on a CBS procedure. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. doesn't freaking pay off. So I'm like, again, like you said, F your awards, like pay me, yes. like pay me. If we fall for it, then they have an excuse. Well, and then they yeah. say, like, if you don't do it, somebody else will. It's, it's hard to navigate that of, like, you know when what? is it worth We're, it? There's, there's, we all know who those options are, right? Who the next person on the list? <laughs> we know them, you. right? We're in the rooms, right? So earlier this summer, there was, there was a job that, that I thought, you know, a, a friend had. Everybody knew that she had that offer. And there was a lowball attempt. And they were like, well, we're going to move on. She's like, bet, move on. Mm -hmm. And they move on to me. But that's my girl. So I was like, what you turn down? 
right? Go ahead, did and the so exact same like, thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I did the exact same thing. Go yeah. on. And so, and so I ask for moon stars, rainbow over, over top of that. I have no intentions of doing it. I want her to get her money. Like, it's not my job. Yeah. So I lose nothing. It was never my job to begin with. But I can, I'm going to make sure she gets paid. So That's amazing. after I pass, because of course I'm like, I'm going to ask for the exact same thing yes, she asked for. Yes, yes. So then we tell the next person, who, because we know who the next person on the list is, yeah. also a friend. Ask for this. Ask for this. Okay. And then the next person, they go down four, four people. I love it. End up paying her more than what, the, the, what she turned down. Because now they're like, mm. but none of us lost a thing. Mm -hmm. like, and that's what it takes. If you want someone, the yeah. ex person, and we're all mm -hmm. in this together, I lose nothing by making sure you get your money. Yeah. I don't want a job that, that, that I'm only getting because they screwed over the next yeah. woman. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Keep it like that. Yeah. I don't want to be on that set. And that's communication. That's like, it's not only communication. It's compassion. It's courage. It's strength. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of other things yeah. to not be that thirst trap who's like, I don't care. <laughs> I want it no yeah. matter what. I'm not going to call my girls and yeah. ask them. So, you know, that takes yeah. stepping up to be the best version of yourself and your higher self that, and to hard. be able to. Yeah. That's it's hard. hard. That's hard. But you did it. Mm -hmm. The fact that it took this long, our representatives really should have been more transparent and more protective. And they aren't or they weren't mm -hmm. sharing what other girls were being offered. I think that's all changed now. But maybe the good thing that came out of it is that we've taken on that ourselves. And doesn't it feel good to have the information? Yes. Like, that's the thing, too, yes. is where people don't want to tell you things. Right. And I'm always like, I just want the information. And we've been afraid to ask for basic information. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Like, I know what, a, a generally speaking, black women in my age range make. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I have a general idea. But I had no idea what anybody else made. Mm. You know what I mean? N no clue. And then when we started meeting and talking and organizing, and you start having these conversations as different people are in, in, in negotiating, you know, renegotiating. And it's like, wait, I'm sorry, how much? What? Mm -hmm. You make what? Mm. <laughs> what? You, you came, like, it came, that number came out your mouth? Mm -hmm. And they said yes? <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Hey, that's some, and I, it would never occur to me to ask for the amount. Like, what? And, and what kept us at a certain place was the discouragement of talking to each other, mm -hmm. much less amongst black actresses, but actresses of color, or all actresses. That's how they've all, that's how all these white men have stayed rich for forever, mm -hmm. is they got each other's back, and they power is mm -hmm. power, and I'm gonna keep you right where you are because then you're gonna keep me right where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And we should be doing the exact same thing with each other. And I think that now, what the, the silver lining of all this craziness is that we've been like, hold up. Yeah. We got it culturally wrong. We got to support each other. Come sisters. together. We got to use yeah. our power for power. We've got to like lift each other up. And we're back. Hello. It's almost like we're on te television. <laughs> you cannot center or amplify a voice that is not real and valid in your own personal life. Wait, break that down a little bit more. Okay, so say I want to amplify Latinas. Okay. But I ain't got Nan, Latino friend. Yeah. Okay. Like, I speak for all women of color. Oh, no, like in my real life? Oh, no. It could be, you know, no. So it is a hard, it is a very hard thing to amplify voices that don't really exist in your life. Mm. And if I didn't, if I wasn't interacting daily with and have deep friendships with every marginalized group, I would have a really hard time passing the mic. Because mm. you have a hard time seeing someone's humanity or, or seeing mm. their perspective. That is, that's hard. And it's also hard to admit like, damn, I'm part of the problem. Mm. Now we're getting into a conversation about race. Yeah. I have plenty of white friends who have no black girlfriends, who have no Latina girlfriends. I walked out of my friend's house the other night. She had a political event, and I saw not one person of color at that event, and I turned around and I walked out and I said, I sent her a text, and I said, I love you, but. And because you yeah. have to really be painfully honest that like, oh shit, oh, oh also, I'm a part of the make, problem, and that's okay, but because I, I can change. If, there, if you don't work with people or how, where you spend your day, it's, it's a whole, that's a whole nother, very valid conversation. It's, it's the communities we uh -huh. choose to live in, the houses of worship we go to, it's the, the, the bars that we frequent, it's the grocery stores, it's, it's our children's school. 
what we consider a good good school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I had to reevaluate what a good school is for my black children, mm -hmm. and that means 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. So they're not the chips in the cookie. Like, like I'm not sending my kid to be a guinea pig or the yeah. the, the Rosa Parks every damn day. Yeah. Come on, let's let's we gotta we gotta be honest. But people who go to those schools who do not have enough color, it's our responsibility to go to the faculty and said you, there need to be more kids of color. There's two kids of color in the kidney garden. That's not acceptable. There are no black teachers. For, from from my perspective, I love my children's school, and. I wanted them to go there and I wanted to make that school better. And I love the challenge of having an ongoing conversation to make this place a better place of learning and to educate them and pound at that door and pound at that door and pound at that door until I see the change that I want to see and not stop until I see the change. It take, and, it, and, and people and a lot willing of uncomfortable to do the conversations. Work. Yeah. And, and, and that's yeah, no, they're that? not no uncomfortable. uncomfortable. They're not uncomfortable for me. I'm not uncomfortable. I mean, I look all. forward to them. They're uncomfortable yes. for whoever I'm having them. Yeah, with. that's. <laughs> yeah. I'm suppose. not uncomfortable either. That's a, that, a bigger hill to climb, and it's it's uh, more rewarding when I see results and open people's eyes. Uh, this day has been incredible, and there's a ton of women in the room, but I don't see enough color, and I didn't see enough color when I walked in the room today. And uh, I had a meeting with a director of another uh, endorsement project that I'm doing. I said, you know, when I show up on set, I would like to see the crew look like the world that I walk around in every day. And I think it's up to all productions to make sure that your crew looks like the world we see. As Caucasian people, it's our job. It's our task. It's our responsibility to make sure that we speak up in every single room we walk into that this is not okay and that we can all do better. It's our job because we've created the problem. Wow. wow. Yeah, cheers, cheers to you cheers. as well. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I would say in addition to that personally, as I craft my voice in those spaces where I feel like I can deliver sound rationale as to why a room needs to be more inclusive because I'm I think I first went through the appreciation and gratitude for being here stage. Like I said, that is very real, um, at least for me, very, very real. As I get to other spaces where I find the courage to voice my opinion, because I do have a very different lens than Ellen, right? Um, I take it upon myself for the projects I do. So when I realized that the they never included <laughs> especially on my set, never included a person of color. The they was never a person of color. I said then in my projects, the they will be. And so I started my company solely because that's the only place I know where I can control. I know I can use my voice where I'm unafraid to say, okay, this is our project, this is what we're doing, and this is what it's going to be, and this is the culture I'm living in, and this is the way we're treating each other, and this is the way we're treating everyone on set, from the PAs to the top producer to the money man to the money woman to the lead actress. Everyone's treated equally, kindly. And this is a puzzle. We're all pieces, and we don't exist without one another. Because for me, that's the space as of right now that I... Um, I feel courage to speak up. And until I get more courage, and until I learn how to speak like Ellen does in those spaces, I will make sure my projects have that. Because that's the only thing I know that, then when I sleep at night, I know, all right, I created that space and I made sure that I brought that. For, okay, so. I, I need a tissue. <laughs> I need tissue. To go back to what Ellen so eloquently said, it wasn't something that was lost on me. I just didn't, I did not have the bravery. For sure. To say it or call it. That's a, why it's our thing, job. Thing. That's why because it's our there's job. there's a part of me that felt lucky to be here. 100% mm -hmm. girl, 100%. And I was like, maybe this is something I might talk about. Later I might call mm -hmm. Gina and be like, mm -hmm. hmm, this is something we would talk about mm -hmm. offline, but not, not in mixed company. Um, but I just would never point out. You know, I, I did say something to like, you know, my own crew, like, oh, I wonder what the photo shoot would have been like if it was a female photographer. Just, you know, curious what that 
might have looked like how how it was different because it's about female empowerment and these bad women in 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 TV. I wonder what the shoot would have been like if it was a female photographer. But I'd never never would have thought to say it in this space because I don't want to appear ungrateful and mm -hmm. the ungrateful brown person. And that's why it is my job. That's why I say we bear the burden because they don't feel comfortable to speak up. And I'm happy to take it on in any room at any time. But it's hard. It's hard. If you go this route, it's hard. And you run the risk of losing your space. I that. You know what I mean? Well, I, mean I don't her need space. space. Is pretty solid. I'm no, like, I was going to say, her, yeah, yeah, her, her space, space is solid. Space is but you know solid. if that's what I have to sacrifice, if that's what it was, it's the right thing to do, and it, it's been too long where the right thing is never done. And that's, that is the f***ing truth, you know? And when I created, you know, my production company, I follow in the footsteps of, of Gina. Oh, girl, now um, you make me cry. No, I mean, like, I came after, <laughs> like, I didn't even know what to ask. Luckily, you know, we had the same management company, you know, at one point, and they were like, oh, this will be different for Gina. I was like, okay, bet. Yeah. She, blazed, she blazed a trail, right? It's not enough for me to not just nurture creatives, you know, and get and, and get them development deals and get them, get their shows on the air. I need to get you paid because that is the equity that Hollywood deals in. I, I need to make sure when they say there's no um, showrunners of color, there's no write, writers of color in senior positions. We're just fresh out when it comes to us and, 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 and elevating more of us into positions of power. Then suddenly you want to tighten the reins and say we, uh, there's just not enough. And if only there were talented, qualified people. And it's like, it's Hollywood. Who's qualified for what? Right. Seriously. Like, yes. Let's Come not, on. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's like, not play these games. There's a formula to art. Exactly. Right. Like, right. Something, yeah. The grip is like somebody's cousin. Like, stop it. Yeah. Like, we're trying to sell a global show. The people in front of and behind the cameras need to match the, the, the target audience. This is my favorite. Gina, the Latino community, the Latinx community is risk averse. You already buy things. Why would we cater to you? What? Latinos, mm. Latinas are the most loyal consumers. 26% in the box office every single weekend. One out of every four tickets are bought by a, a Latinx. And we are already buying them. So there's no reason to cater to us. I said, oh right, that's called integrity. If only, if only the community, the audience knew their power. That's what I pray for. Grey's Anatomy was Grey's. the most inclusive looking cast for in that sure. time. For sure, for sure. I was like, oh my yes. God, a black doctor. Yes, my sister's yes. a doctor. I was like, thank you, okay. Yes. Live your life in the correct way. And if you give a shit, if you care, you will change the people in your life. And what a more rich existence. What a more rich existence to be just like culturally open, to see other people's perspective is enriching to yourself having to hit a mandate or whatever. Yeah. It's just so much more enriching to be like, that's a perspective I don't know, but guess what I do now? Because I watch my girl go through it and live it, and now I know so much more. It is hard to make new friends and, and change your lifestyle and open up, especially people who are in, more in the public eye. You know, you're more guarded and closed off, and, and that becomes maybe a bigger challenge sometimes. You gotta actively go out and w with a purpose try to make your circle bigger, try to make your circle look different, be try open. to make your circle be open more inclusive, and be kind. even if it's work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially it's, it's, if work it's work worth doing. Yeah, especially if it's work, you're right.